What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to the Call Game Recap. Will we recap the game? You know exactly what we do here, man. You've been watching for a few months now, and I appreciate you. Leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Let's get into it, man. Uh, me and my guys were talking about this earlier. You know how me and the boys do. We sit in the party, and we watch basketball games together virtually. It's friendship. And we, you know, we always have discussions when we're watching games. And it is so crazy the amount of the, the talent difference between the Eastern Conference and the Western Conference, right? The two seed right now in the East is the Milwaukee Bucks. They're on a three-game losing streak. They're sitting at 16-11. and They lost to OKC today without Shea. And we're going to talk about that. But at 16-11, they are the two seed at the moment in the East. That same record would have them as the seventh seed out West. They'd be in the play-in, y'all. They'd be in the play-in if they were out West. It is so crazy how different the talent is. And, and we're talking about individual players and teams like I feel like out West, we always see multiple players get snubbed from the All-Star game. And out East, I'm not saying that some of the players that got in on the back end aren't deserving, but I would take some of the Western Conference players over those two Eastern Conference players at the end of it. You know what I'm saying? And the same thing happens when we get to the playoffs. We have multiple years in recent history where the Eastern Conference team at the at the seventh, eighth seed is sub-500. Then out West, we have teams over 500 just watching from the crib. The solution? Get rid of conferences. I know it's easier said than done. I know. I know, Adam Silver. You ain't gotta. You ain't gotta message me again. All right. I want to talk about today's games, of course, because with all that being said, the the Boston Celtics fall to thirteen and thirteen. I think that's what the bulk of this episode is going to be about with the Boston Celtics. Um, and the Washington Wizards go to seventeen and seven. I'm gonna give them a little a little bit of praise right now. I do believe that if Scott Brooks was fired and they had a competent coach, they'd be significantly better. Um, because today was one of those things. Like they had been one of the worst defensive defensive teams in the league so far. Um, this season. And today they play solid defense. Now, the Celtics did miss a ton of open shots, but it goes hand in hand, man. It was cool to see that Bradley Beal and Russell Westbrook get a win together because so far the season, those have been kind of rare, uh, far in between. So big win for them. Um, let's talk about the Celtics, though, because so far, pretty, pretty disappointed. Now, I know that Jason Tatum missed a couple weeks with, with the virus. Uh, they still missed Marcus Smart, who is the heart and soul of this team, and they're, they're definitely, definitely needing that. But even with all those things considered, 13 to 13 is a way worse than what we expected, right? And and a funky diabetic, who's another content creator on the site, uh, go check him out. He makes good NBA YouTube videos. Um, he tweeted today that there's like, I think he said there's only five good NBA teams. And though I don't 100% agree with him. I know exactly. I know exactly what he means by their tweet because some of the teams that were really, really good last season um, that we considered that maybe were in the contender pool or right below the contender pool, like the Celtics, like the Raptors, have been highly, highly disappointed. Like the Miami Heat, who went on a title run, highly, highly disappointed. So I understand what he means by there's only five teams, and the Celtics have been really disappointing. Now, I can't help but to look at this Celtics team and think about this offseason because that was the big, big turning point in what is going on right now Gordon Hayward a free agent and it was said on Zach Lowe's podcast who is a very trusted guy if you ask me Zach Lowe hit a brother up I would love to talk he talked about how there are multiple teams out there that were willing to throw offers to get Gordon Hayward on a sign and trade deal and the most significant one was the Miles Turner one Miles Turner was literally on the table in Danny Ainge's lap and he was like nah I'm going to need another starter Danny Ainge get a little bit too greedy they lose Gordon Hayward to nothing for Charlotte and then he goes to Charlotte and now they have a team with many, many holes on it. Miles Turner fits a big hole that you have. Miles Turner's playing at a defensive player of the year uh, a, a caliber right now. He's playing defensive player of the year caliber right now. And you need those type of production. But even deep in the, deeper than that, losing Gordon Hayward for literally nothing, even if it's not Miles Turner, is terrible because Gordon Hayward was... Other than like Gordon, um, other than Marcus Smart, who I said is the heart and soul, Gordon Hayward was kind of like this glue piece. One thing that is really, really missing on this Boston Celtics team is playmaking. As good as Jalen Brown has been in the progression of his playmaking throughout his career, he still, we won't classify the playmaker stamp. Same thing with Jason Tatum, and Kemba Walker has never been that, even though he's been a multiple-time All-Star. They don't have playmaking, but you know who their playmaking had been over the last couple seasons when he was healthy? It was Gordon Hayward. Now, now Marcus Smart does alleviate some of that pain as well. Once he get back, he'll definitely help. But watching this game was terrible. And, I, and of course, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, they are locks to be All-Stars this season. And, and maybe I'm wrong here, and I, I want Boston Celtics fans who are who are watching maybe more intently than I am to, to correct me if I'm wrong. Though they are both having stellar, stellar seasons, I feel like they don't play off each other as well as you would want them to. And I know they're still super young, and maybe I'm asking too much from them, but they don't really play off of each other well. It's kind of like, all right, I'm Jason Tatum. I'm going to give me a bucket. Jalen, you got the next one, and vice versa, right? 
And I think that does improve when they continue to to get better as playmakers and playmakers. But I don't think that they – I'm not saying that they don't fit. I don't want people to misinterpret me. They're, I'm not saying that they don't fit, but they just don't play as well off each other as two all-star players typically can, right? Like, the, this is going to be a weird example because this team never won a championship. DeMar DeRozan and Kyle Lowry, when they were together, they played off each other very, very, very well. And these are two guys that don't. And maybe it's because they are two wing players, right? A guard and a forward or a guard and a wing, I guess it's a little bit easier. Guard in the center is a little bit easier to play off of each other, not just two wings. But they don't, they don't really have that. And then when you take a look at this box score, this is horrendous. And again, it was a very bad shooting night from them. But the fact that they only had two players score double digits as a team is terrible. Now, even if you weren't going to accept the Miles Turner trade, this team is lacking offensive depth on the bench. Right? Who off their bench do you trust to come in and get you some buckets? They don't have that at all. <laughs> Literally at all. Like they were trying. And Taco Fall was the best thing they had today. And that was garbage time minutes. You know, they were trying. They were like Carson Edwards last week. They even gave Tremont Water some run last week. They don't have that spark plug. And I think that, that all of the great teams in the league have that type of spark plug one one way or another. Now, me and my guys talked about this before the season even started on our podcast. None of us had the Boston Celtics as contenders, but even at 13 and 13, I would say it's a little bit underwhelming. I wonder what Danny Ainge's plan is for this for this um, trade deadline season because I don't know what type of moves are there to be made. But I think if they want to maybe hit contenders, um, they're going to have to make a deal. Or since their star players are so young, this could be just a not a chill season because I'm not I'm definitely not saying go tank, but maybe just like continue to develop these younger guys so they do they do play well together next season. You know what I'm saying? I don't really know what the direction for the Celtics is, but so far disappointing. Speaking of disappointing, let's talk about the Raptors. Um, they got a, they called a loss today. I feel bad for for Pascal Siakam. Now I did not watch the entirety of this game. I, I won't lie to you. I saw Ricky Rubio hit four threes, and I think. At the end of the broadcast, because I tuned in like last five minutes of the fourth quarter, they're like, this is the fourth time he's done this in his entire career. So, yeah, big night from him. Um, I'm just waiting for the day that Carthony Towns and D'Angelo Russell are on the court together, and that will be the day that I watch a, con a complete Minnesota Timberwolves game. But until then, I'll be in and out. I'll be in and out. But I feel bad for Pascal Siakam because there has been, what, four shots this season that were game-winning or game-tying shots for Pascal Siakam that were halfway down and come out. And I, I feel bad because you see the frustration when he walks back to the bench after a timeout. He did the same thing that Luca did today where he's like kind of like ripping his jersey, you know what I'm saying? I feel bad for him in that sense because that shot, the layup, literally a layup, no uncontested, rolled out. Rolled out. It is it, yeah. It's it's bad. It's bad. A Carlton Towns fouled out of this game, and I was like, okay, the Raptors about to do their thing, and they they couldn't get it. Um. So so shout out to Ant Man who continues to to look really good, really good. But again, I didn't watch the entirety of this game. Six threes from Malik Beasley, who's been under the radar. A lot of a lot of Minnesota Timberwolves fans been wanting me to talk about Malik Beasley, and the reason I haven't is because I haven't been really watching that many Minnesota Timberwolves games. I could look at box scores and be like, yes, twenty, but that's not real in-depth analysis, you know what I'm saying? Um, the next game that I got around to watching, the Detroit Pistons, I, you know what, like a week or two ago, I was like, why would I watch the Detroit Pistons? They're at the bottom of the conference. Yeah, I'm just going to start watching the Detroit Pistons again because uh, Mason Plumley is the guy, triple-double alert. Um, Sadiq Bay has been pretty solid, and they beat up on the Pels. And, and it was like a revenge game because Stan Van Gundy was back in town, and Stan Van Gundy set this organization back with some signings of, of John Lure. Do y'all remember the John Lewis signing? Because I remember the John Lewis signing. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, well, welcome back. Um, welcome back. Yeah, I don't know what to say about the Pelicans. Eric Bledsoe just doesn't like to play basketball anymore, at least not for this team. But I think I said that in the last episode. So we'll move on to the next game, which was the nasty televised game between the Portland Trailblazers and the Mavericks. This is the realization I came to today. Let me know if you can agree or disagree with this. Porzingis is a small forward in a... 7-3 body. He can't set screens. He doesn't box out. <laughs> I just think he's a small forward in the 7-3 body. So let's without the seven without the small forward um lateral quickness. But you give him he doesn't do the big man things. The big man things you want to do. There was a play in this game, and 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 I saw the replay this multiple times on Twitter, so I think a lot of people know what I'm talking about. Where he had a dunk. But instead of dunking the ball, he tried to lay it up at 7-3. And somebody came in and blocked it. Derrick Jones Jr. came in and swatted it. Dunk the ball. You're seventh. He's like a finesse player at 7-3. And um, I don't know if that's the type of player you need. Bro, Luka Doncic had he just he had his career high 46 a couple nights ago. 
This performance was better than this 40, 46, if you ask me. He couldn't miss. And I understand the frustration of trying to rip the shirt because he couldn't miss and he didn't have it. And and I believe that what I would what I would love to see is at the end of the season, um, I would love to have every player that had contracted the virus throughout the season to tell their experiences and how it affected them on the court. Because I think a guy that is heavily affected by catching the virus throughout the season is Josh Richardson. Now, Josh Richardson was bad last year for Philly, and this year he's he's doing the same thing. But he, him not being on the court at the end of the game just shows you how maybe it's the conditioning still because of the virus or whatever. Like, there is no reason for him not to be on the Damian Lillard assignment. Remember, I always reference this trade because it was a big one. Seth Curry for Josh Richardson. You bring Josh Richardson in because he is a perimeter defender to have alongside Luka because you don't want Luka guarding uh, Damian Lillard because you, he's giving it all on the offensive side of the ball. So you make this trade for a defender, and the defender doesn't even close out the game. And I honestly would think it's because of conditioning. He's just not there because I know the virus affects everybody differently, and he's a world star athlete, but some some players have already told stories of the virus kicking their butts. Mo Bamba was, was very, very open about that earlier this season. So I wonder if that's one of the things because there's you want him on the floor normally to guard Damian Lillard in the t- when, it's, when it's name time. So, yeah, Porzingis, small four, not a center. Is that okay? Not when you want him to be your center. <laughs> Shout out to Luka for the big performance. But the Portland Trail Blazers, I mentioned this before, but the fact that they've continued to stay afloat with all, I think that, that with all of the injuries, Nurkic, CJ, Yep, that is two of their top three players gone, but they continue to perform well. And I remember, who here remembers the foul shot days? Put ones in chat if you remember the the foul shot days. In the foul shot days, I remember I did an article when I used to write, or I did a YouTube video, it was both, because I used to do both. And I was talking about Damian Lillard as as a leader. This is maybe six seasons ago. And people were laughing at me like, this man ain't really that much of a leader. The, but he was really flying his team out to the Bahamas, flying his teammates out to the Bahamas to work out as a team for a week, but to also be in the Bahamas. Leadership. He is a, he might be the best leader in the entire NBA. He just might be. This man will not go down. He will not let his ship go down no matter the injuries. And I saw some Portland Trail. This is this is kind of rough for me. I saw some Portland Trailblazer fans looking to trade CJ because Gary Trent has been so good. I don't know how to feel about that. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know, I don't know if those are real diehard uh, the Trailblazer fans if they're trying to trade CJ. Man, compared him to – I forgot who he compared him to. Anyway. A big game for them, 16-10, and 10, when you consider all their injuries. That is amazing. Shout-out to the Portland Trail Blazers. The Bucks lost to the Thunder, um, where the Thunder just will not lose. They don't understand what a tank is. I think, that's, I think that's what my boy said on Twitter. They don't understand what a tank is. They just always want to win, especially without Shea. This is a 100% guaranteed win for most teams. Um, but, no, OKC has, has shown against the Lakers, against multiple really, really good teams, that, no, we're not going to go down without a fight. And today they ended up getting a win because Josh Jackson – I'm sorry, Justin Jackson hit a game-winning called game type shot. Lou Dort, Hamidou Diallo didn't have a great game, but he, I remember I remember him hitting one big, one or two big shots down the line. This team could be fun to watch, even without their best player. And, again, Al Horford continues to play well. Darius Baisley, I think I told him last episode, like, bro, you got to play better today. He plays significantly better, significantly better. And uh, Cambridge Williams continues to fill up the stat line a little bit. Bro, I like I like watching that team play. I, you wouldn't expect to watch that team because Shea Gears Alexander is not there, but I do. I do. And the Bucks, ah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a hard next, bro. Three-game losing streak. Ah, it's a hard next. Um, and I think that's it, bro. All the other games, I, I gave a little bit of the Lakers versus Nuggets, but Anthony Davis went out, and I was like, okay, this game is over. Um, I keep missing the Kings being good. When the Kings went on that win streak, I was in California, so I missed every single game. And now that I think about it, I was literally in California, which means that it was probably on local TV. I could have actually watched those games. But now I sit down, popcorn, um, not real popcorn, figurative popcorn, ready to watch the Sacramento Kings play against the Grizzlies, Ja versus De'Aaron, two of the best you know, up-and-coming point guards in the league, and they don't, they don't even do anything. So big win for the Grizzlies, I guess. Uh, me and my me and my guy had bet a little bit of money for the Cavs to beat the Clippers without Paul Pierce. I mean, not Paul Pierce, Paul George and Kawhi. They were like a plus 800. I was like, okay, I'll throw $3 to that. You know, $3 turned into whatever. They got destroyed. So, yeah, uh, Vegas is usually right. 
Vegas is usually right. That's all I got, man. If you enjoy, leave it a like. Let me know what you think about all the things. Porzingis is a small forward. Um, the Celtics stuff and me missing out on the Sacramento Kings on live TV.